Hey everyone, I'm just taking some measurements on this guitar. It's a Recording King Dirty 30s, and it's a 1920s or 30s style mail order catalog guitar. It's got the floating bridge and a tailpiece, and some really cool uh, fret marker inlays there, kind of Art Deco. As would be expected, the owner is a blues person, and um, the issue is that the action is quite low. It's only 50 thousandths or 3 and a half 60 fourths at the 12th fret. And when you're slapping away doing the sort of sun house techniques, the strings are rattling against the top of the frets. So what we're going to do is make a new bridge for it that's slightly taller, and also uh, increase the string spacing. This has got very narrow sort of 52, 53 millimeter spacing, which is what you'd expect to see on a Fender style guitar. And the owner likes a lot more room for his right hand. The other thing we'll do is swap out this tailpiece for a different one he gave me and see if we can increase the break angle slightly, which is going to hatch it. It'll happen naturally when I put a new bridge on it that's taller, but uh, there's very little break angle and we want to increase uh, the downward pressure slightly. I glued up the bridge blank, a piece of ebony on this maple here overnight, and I'm ready to make the arch on the bottom of the bridge. I took and put a score line on the areas where the feet are going to be so that if there's any tendency for the maple to chip out it won't go into the portion of the wood that I want to save and keep clean. Using a little router table here obviously I was concerned about getting my fingers so close to the bit so I've super glued the blank in place on a scrap block with masking tape and super glue in between that works really well and I put a couple of little screws on either side just to hold it in place. I'll pivot into the bit pretty close to where the end of the foot is going to be and then move it along and uh, take successive passes, light passes, because this maple has a little bit of curl in it and uh, I don't want to chip it out too badly. I'm just checking the radius on the original bridge's top and um, it's slightly less than this 16 inch, in other words slightly flatter. I expect that it probably started off as a 16 and then flattened a bit through string tension. With the radius sanded on top of the bridge now I'm setting up the string spacing lines here and also the compensation line that will give me the actual bridge shape. Uh, as you can see I've done a double offset style here that uh, kicks the B string back a little bit farther not unlike what you would see on the old Supro style bridges or airline bridges. Okay, all set up here and ready to go. Got the bridge and the tailpiece. And that tailpiece is fashioned after the style of trapeze tail that Gibson used in its L-series archtop guitars from the teens through, I guess, the mid to late 20s. You can see that it actually, the bars just travel over top and hook directly into the block. The strings are straight through, which should cut down on our string breakage. Um, the main issue still being that the brake angle is not optimal. Uh, we gained about a degree or so. So that works okay. Uh, we had to go up a string gauge. We've gone up to medium gauge strings to get enough tension on this bridge. The um, the string angle is still not optimal. It's better than it was, but it's not really got enough downward pressure to satisfy me on the outside uh, strings, which is kind of what happens when you've got a radius fingerboard and bridge. Um, they have the least uh, break angle um, from the tailpiece. In order to get the geometry just right and optimal, you would have to have a thicker than usual fingerboard, at least a quarter of an inch, and lots of back set on the neck 
so that you'd end up with a three-quarter inch high bridge. Um, in this case, you've got some trigonometry happening here where the apex of the bridge uh, forms a hypotenuse with the end or the zero point on the angle there, and the strings always follow that angle. Um, what we would really like to do is sort of move that breaking point in towards the bridge, and that's very difficult to do with uh, a floating style tailpiece. Even the rigid kind, like a banjo tailpiece, will have enough flex in them that they'll come up and sort of end up being at that angle. So in order to get more downward pressure, probably the only thing we could really do would be to get a block like this and actually physically bolt it to the soundboard, or maybe make um, what's effectively a bridge pad with uh, pin bridge uh, holes in it maybe three quarters of an inch behind the actual bridge there. So make it sort of a flat top attachment system. Um, but as it stands, it's playable. And sounds pretty cool. It's an interesting guitar. It's got an X brace in it rather than uh, the horizontal ladder bracing system, which is good. Um, you can see that the arch in that bridge there sort of takes the downward string pull and pushes it out laterally and it's supported by the wings of the bridge. They just come in just towards the tips of the bridge there so that it's it's structurally um, pretty sound. It doesn't deflect a whole lot under string tension and they made the top fairly thick as well. It's a cool little guitar. It's kind of fun. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.